Have you ever heard of OSINT? OSINT stands for Open Source Intelligence, which involves the collection and analysis of data gathered from open sources to produce actionable intelligence. It's basically a way of using various sources on the internet to find information about any person, place, or thing. I was messing with some OSINT stuff and I found this repo that allows me to search any username and it'll tell you pretty much everywhere that that username happens to be used. The creator basically uses this big list uh, in a JSON file, right? And this JSON file consists of objects that include URLs. These URLs are used to make HTTP calls and depending on the result of that HTTP call, it'll represent this username as either existing or not existing. Each object contains other information as well, but the only fields that we'll worry about is the URI check, which stands for the site we want to check, and the E code, which tells us the HTTP response code we should look at if the account exists. So I want to write some Go that calls each of these sites and tells me the result. I think this is a really cool project for those of you that want to learn Golang, be exposed to a little bit of cybersecurity all at the same time. And if we're going to create a new project, of course, we need some sort of name. At first I thought go-user, then I thought, well, at first this will be a CLI project, so I don't really want to type go-user, so I removed the dash. That was go user with no dash, which in my head sounded like gooser. So I went with gooser because it made me laugh. Anyway, let's get into the code. All right, first things first, let's go ahead and take a look at the JSON schema of this list that we're going to be actually working with. This schema was found in the contributor documentation in that core repo that I was talking about earlier. Anytime you get involved with the open source project, for those of you that are new, read their contributor documentation. Uh, even if you don't plan on contributing, it'll give you some good information about how to navigate the code and all that good stuff. Now, these are all of the fields that are within this array of sites that's contained within this JSON file. We're only going to pay attention to a few of those fields. We're going to pay attention to the URI underscore check, the E code, and the M code. The URI check is really just the uh, site that we're going to actually check against, and it contains a template string that we need to replace with our own username. Then we have the E code that we need to use to check for a good HTTP response, which usually they reply with like 200, something like that. And then the M code, which is the bad example of the HTTP response. So like 404 or whatever. So let's go ahead and initialize our project. We're going to make a directory called gooser CD into that directory, then run a good old go mod init. I named it the Goosey Gooser. Don't ask me why. Name it what you want. And now we are going to get into our main. So we're going to be using the flag package from the standard library. Uh, we're not going to use any additional like frameworks or libraries for CLI stuff. I'm going to try and stick with the standard library. That flag package has a flag.func function, which allows you to define the flag that you want. Second parameter is going to be the help documentation, essentially. And then you pass in a function, and that's where we're going to put all of our logic. It's really important to do that flag.parse at the bottom. If you don't do that, then, you know, all flags won't work. And you need to do that after you register all your flags. First thing we're going to do in this function is just check if the value we pass in is an empty string. Give them a little error. Be like, hey, you know, you didn't pass me a value. Give me that sweet, sweet value. And I put a couple comments in here just to kind of outline what we need to do next. We, we want to get a list of the sites out of that JSON file. So we're going to like download that file. And then we're going to check if the user is a part of that site. And we'll make a couple functions to actually do that. Those functions that we're going to create is get sitemap and check sites. So we're going to get that sitemap, we're going to download it, and then we're going to check all the sites against that file that we downloaded. So let's go ahead and define these functions. First, I want to do the sitemap. I'm going to define a couple of constant variables at the top, one with a link to the actual JSON file, the raw version, and next, the name of the file, which we're just going to keep the same name that was in the repo. Then if you look at the definition of my function, you can see that I'm returning two things. This what's my name data structure and an error, but we haven't defined what's my name yet. So let's go ahead and define that bad boy. All right, so this struct was actually made from that JSON schema that we talked about at the beginning. And if you want to like take 
JSON and make it into a Golang struct. You can use something like the link that I have up there to do that. It's pretty simple. You can also work with this in an unstructured way, but it just makes stuff a little harder. There are some libraries out there too that kind of allow you to do some dynamic parsing into structures and things like that. But for this, we're just going to predefine it, which is pretty much what I see mostly people talking about anyway. But I just wanted you guys to know that there are those options. So if you look at the contributor documentation and you look at the JSON file that we're actually downloading, you'll see that this maps with those fields and values. First things first, we're going to create a file that we're going to store our data in. I'm doing that here using os.create. Next, we're going to actually use the URI constant that we define at the top to do an HTTP get on that so we can get access to the data that we want to store in our file. The next thing that we're going to do is take the data that we got from making the HTTP get call, which is raw JSON, and we're going to copy that into the file that we created, which is this out variable here. After that copy is done, we're going to open the file again, which now contains all of our sitemap data so that we can do some stuff with it. That stuff that we want to do with it is just read our file and then marshal that JSON into our data structure that we defined earlier. That gives us the ability to work with this data a lot easier. And by the way, that ioutil.readall, that's actually deprecated now. It's just io.readall. Now that we've defined that function, we can go ahead and go down to our main function again, inside the flag, which contains our function that has all of our logic, and call get sitemap. And now that we have all of that site data and that result, we can pass that to our check sites function, which we haven't defined yet, and go through and check if each site is a hit or a miss. So we define our check sites function, which takes in the what's my name data structure containing our sites that we need to check and the flag that we pass in, which is the username. First things first, let's get a little structure. Uh, I'm going to create a hits slice here, which is just going to contain a series of sites that gave us a good response. Then we're going to loop through all of our sites, run a few checks inside that loop to see if it's a hit or a miss. And at the end, we're going to return our hits. Now that we're inside our loop, we're actually going to substitute that account string that's inside all of our URIs. If you look inside the wmn-data.json, you'll see this string. And we want to replace that with our username that we're passing in via the CLI, which is the next argument to the function that we're actually passing in. And the final argument is just saying how many times we want to do that. And we want to do that one time. Now that we have our URI all configured right, we're gonna run a get on that URI, do a normal error handling that we always have to do. And based on what response we get, we will see if it's a hit or a miss and add it to our hit slice or not. This is where the E code and the M code we were talking about earlier come into play, where I check my response status code against what would be expected from that site as a hit or a miss. Now all we have to do is call check sites in our flag definition and we're good to go. You can check out all the code in my GitHub. I have that link below. If you learn anything, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. It really helps the channel. I appreciate you and see you in the next one.